Hi, it's Mark, and I am in Redwood City, in front of the San Mateo County History Museum to my left, and the Fox Theater to my right. And it is cold. It's normally a little warmer by now, but uh, it's, it is cold down here. And uh, it's time for my reading from the Golden Present Daily Inspirational Readings by Sri Swami Satchidananda. And this is a project that I started on December 21st, 2016. And I've been doing a video a day um, since then and will continue until the December 20th as part of a challenge and commitment to myself of um, adding to my practice, my uh, spiritual practice, but also just getting comfortable with social media stuff, which made a little progress, but in any event, all right, this is for, this is for October 18th, and it says, make your entire life an act of worship. If you sit and meditate, that's good, but what are you doing the rest of the time? Are you also meditating then? Whatever you do, do it as a meditation. That is important. If you're doing your job as a meditation, you don't even need to sit and meditate. But are you able to do that? If not, then meditation is a preparation for you. When you sit for meditation, you are preparing yourself to apply that meditative attitude in all your actions. Puja, or formal worship, is also like that. To make the entire life an act of worship, you begin here. You're taking a vow. My every act should be a worship like this. It is almost like practicing at home before coming on stage. Once you are an expert dancer, you don't have to practice at home. At any time, you can just get up on the stage. Still, even the experts need a little rehearsal. That is where the puja comes in. A little rehearsal before you begin the day. If you don't have much time, a little time will do. It need not be elaborate. The scriptures say, God is happy with a simple form of worship. God does not look for your formalities. God looks at your heart. He sees with what kind of heart you are worshiping. Make your entire life an act of worship. Well, I think these kids coming out here, their their whole life is a playground, and it's they're you know dedicating their energy and and spirit to really the art of of play and fun. <laughs> so they're just adding by the numbers, coming in all directions here. Um, but it seems like it's something we we lose as we age, simply because of the structure of our culture that we have to uh, earn income and figure out how to make a living and get our own, uh, establish our own life with getting a home. And but early on, we remember that you know just to play and enjoy how important that is, and not to forget that. And it's the same kind of thing with worship and with prayer and with dedication. I can see my breath. Wow, it's that cold out. Uh, that we're able to remind ourselves about this practice and honor of this life, of this time, and that we are, um, you know, we have the ability to express our gratitude. Sometimes when we get all caught up with what we ha ends up happening as we go further on in our life and as time goes by, we move away from that that play age of, of a child and into you know the seriousness of an adult <laughs> and we maybe need those little reminders whether it's a vacation or some kind of a practice that, that kind of resets ourselves so we can remember that play of life we can remember in this case with the reading that ability to be grateful for this body being able to be here, to be able to give honor to whatever created us, whatever gave us this opportunity to be here. We might take it for granted that, you know, well, I'm just here because I'm here. 
And it's not simply because your parents made you, but there is even something greater that called you into this world, that there is a reason to bring you in or else you wouldn't be here. And that's part of what yoga helps us to navigate towards, is to understand what is the purpose of being here? Why am I here? And that's even a path of yoga to ask continual questions. Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose? And to keep coming back to who am I is the question that can really guide someone home into that um, that space of deep introspection. And it's, you know, what the Swami Satchidananda and many other yogis say, it's not for the purpose of getting really good at being introspective and meditative and doing all these practices that create honor and worship. It's to do them, as he's saying in here, so that they become a, a practice for the rest of life what we do on a regular basis, how we interact. And that's part of also why I'm doing these readings is to learn how to integrate the spiritual teachings and the practices into an everyday experience and into something as you know up to date as social media as that is for me and um, being able to connect in a, in a different way than, I'm, than I do in my everyday life with teaching and seeing friends and whatever um, happens in a day, in a week. But to add something like this daily that just kind of reminds me about what I'm doing with my business, personal life, friendships, professional, you know, all that. Something that helps me have that touchstone. That's what, that's what these have become. So what is that for you? And it doesn't have to be doing yoga or going to a church or synagogue. It can be you know, some other practice that you're dedicated to, but have something that's your touchstone. And then it reminds you how to integrate that and share that with the rest of your life. Okay, I'm gonna go inside, it's cold. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, bye.